This is a virtual tour from the past to the present of a historical site in North Strathfield, the Arnott's Biscuit Factory. We are learning about the history of a historical site in our local community. You can pause the video here to read the success criteria in detail. This is William Arnott. He was born in 1827 in Scotland. William and his brother learned how to be bakers and pastry chefs in Scotland. And in, eight, in 1848 in February, William was 21 years old. He and his brother, David, traveled on a boat to Sydney Cove. They came to Australia from Scotland for a new beginning. When their boat arrived in Sydney, they were welcomed warmly and they were offered jobs. William spoke with the captain and he was interested in the cabin biscuits that the passengers were given. These were hard biscuits and they lasted a long time. On his journey, he tasted them and he experimented with the ingredient called arrowroot, which is easily grown in Australia. On this journey, William also met an Irish lady who was immigrating to Australia too. Her name was Monica Sinclair and they soon became husband and wife. The captain also gave William a colourful parrot that soon became the mascot of his store. His daughter-in-law painted the picture that is so famous today and you can see the Arnott's logo on the right. William wasn't ready to settle in Sydney yet, so in 1850 after he married Monica Sinclair, he and his younger brother travelled to Maitland in the Hunter River Valley near Newcastle. There were a series of bad floods in the community of the Hunter Valley where he was living at the time and he unfortunately lost his wife, so he decided to move. He took his five young children and his business to Newcastle. In 1850, William and his brother travelled to Morpeth to reunite with their parents and four siblings who were living in the Tamworth region at Peels River. In 1853, when William was 26 years old, he opened his first bakery in High Street, West Maitland. And in 1862, his brother David started a new business on Swan Street in the same town. And in 1863, William joined him, joined his brother, and they together were baking in what is now referred to as the historic Arnott Bakehouse at the back of Morpeth Sourdough Bakery. William came to Newcastle with not a lot of money and he leased a shop in Hunter Street. This place quickly became so popular and he was advertising all over the place. Now, during this year, he also married for the second time. His new wife was also from Scotland and her name was Margaret Fleming. They had eight children together and these children all helped William continue his family, family legacy. This is the Arnott family here. William and Margaret are on the right. Highlighted here you can see the children from his first marriage and the children from his second marriage. In the next few years, the name Arnott became famous for bread and cakes, but especially for sweet and plain biscuits and ship biscuits, which were, there were a big trade of this during the, during the time and became, between 1869 and 1876 he got some land in what became known as Union Street and that's where he built his family home and a factory fitted with the latest machines. Many years ago things were really different. The world was very different in the 1800s. The first photographs had just been taken in 1826. There were no televisions Telephones were not even invented, no internet, no computer games. People even didn't really buy biscuits during this time, except perhaps for the ships. Most households actually baked their own bread, their own cakes and their own biscuits. Buying them elsewhere would have been seen as an unnecessary luxury. Things in the past were very different. They used to have to travel around with horse and buggy. They didn't have electronic um, they didn't have cars or, or buses like we do today. It was very different. But now, 8 kilograms of biscuits are eaten by every man, woman and child in Australia almost each year. Arnott's makes 7 out of 10 of these biscuits. Mmm, mmm.
This was William's family home. He came he started up his bakery in Hunter Street in Newcastle, 1865, and he didn't realise at the time how popular his baked goods would be to the Australian people. You can see that this is it in the past, and in the, at the top right corner is it in the, in the present. It's still around today. In 1894, Arnott's opened in Sydney Forest, a forest lodge in Glebe, and William brought his five sons to work with him. He was getting older, so he retired in 1899, and his sons took over the running of the business, and the factory stayed in operation until 1909. But unfortunately, as William got older, he passed away in 1901. But the family business continued to do really well. And this is a picture here of some of the many employees that he had working for him. At the time, he had 800 people working for him, but then that number soon grew. Now, this is where our part of the story comes in. During 1905, when there became a need for a larger bakery in Sydney because his business was becoming so popular, it was so famous, and the Arnott's brand was known almost everywhere. So William and his sons had to expand their business to a new place. By the mid-1870s, the first factory was established in, in town. And until the move to Homebush, this is where the business actually gained its its main identity. This is what Homebush looked like before Arnott's was around. It was a bit more rural. There wasn't many there wasn't many um, factories actually in this time. And European settlement f first came to Homebush in 1793. Most of the farms were to the east of the future Arnott site. They were transformed into larger estates. And from this time onwards, the area grew in agriculture, so farming, growing food and raising animals. By the time the Arnott's family selected this area as a possible future factory site, it was still a rural rural place in, in Sydney and not many people came here because it was too far away in the countryside and not well known. In 1905, this is when... Arnett had the Arnett family had the idea to expand that they needed more space. They needed access closer to a railway station to be able to transport their goods. And so in 1906, this is when they purchased six and a half acres of land at the Homebush site. And in 1907, the factory was designed and built by architect Charles Slater. Here is a newspaper article, um, as you can see on the left. And, you know, back in these times, the site in Homebush in North Stratford was kind of seen as Arnott's folly. It was considered too far from the city to get any people coming or any workers. But the Homebush factory, which opened in 1908, was eventually the largest in the Southern Hemisphere. And it exported biscuits from Homebush to the rest of the world. Many members of the Arnott's factory actually lived nearby in Strathfield. The factory was in operation until 1997. Here is an, another advertisement, which is advertising the building, um, the factory building in Homebush, North Strathfield. It's Arnott's Famous Biscuits. Always ask for Arnott's. They are better than ever. True story. It was quite amazing how such a popular market could have even started from scratch, developing into such a market leader after 125 years. This humble business in Australia is, is, is really something to be proud of. It's made a difference to the way society has been um, thinking and looking at their attitudes towards biscuits. Now, let's watch a little advertisement of Arnott's. Mm, I bet you want to go home and, and ask your mum or dad to buy some Arnott's biscuits, hey? 
The business was producing a wide variety of cakes, biscuits, and breads. It was most famous for its ship biscuits, which were the biscuits that were um, given to passengers on the ships. Um, the brand of Arnott's was so popular, and this is why they had to expand. And the deliveries of biscuits eventually got um, passed, um, moved around by these trucks here. These famous red vans in the late 1920s were seen all around town. I wonder if this street on the right looks familiar to you. Well, here you can see at the bottom right-hand corner is what it currently looks like now. And if you've ever been driving on Parramatta Road with your parents, I'm sure you've seen this famous Arnott's um, Bridge signage. And you can see that it used to look very different. Over here, we can see the Bakehouse Quarter. Now, this is on the left is the current headquarters of the Arnott's company. And they don't operate as a factory here anymore, but they do hold a lot of meetings here. And if you're ever with your parents walking by this street, you you're, you can ask, you can go upstairs to the lobby and see some of the displays of the model cars and tins. They're very precious and people even collect these. We have a couple here that we've collected at our school. Um, but because this is the main headquarters here in North Strathfield, the town has preserved the idea which is now why it's called the Bakehouse Quarter because it used to be a bakehouse. And I wonder if you can spot any other links to the Arnott's Biscuit Factory. Well, if you look over here, there's Bar Biscotti and across the road is Cookies, Cookies Lounge. And in this Cookies um, Lounge area, um, there's also a display of Arnott's um, biscuit tins and um, some pictures of Arnott's on the inside. Here is another image of what it was before in the past and in the present. You can see some similarities are still there. The building structure is still there. It's heritage listed. And... The Muse, as you can see in this in the, on this in this image here, is the name for a street which has has build has a building that used to be a stable. So much like today, trucks used to pull up here and take stock away. However, unlike today, the early days had horses and carts to deliver. Instead. They were all. There were also not not streets, but there were fields where horses would graze in the evenings, and during the days when they weren't delivering stock, they would be in the fields. The factory um, behind this muse um, sign, there were some shoots where um, some of the ingredients could be placed and um, passed on. The area had um, had um, a delivery area. And the workers would pass each tin carefully down into to the waiting workers who would load the wagons and, or horses. They had to be really careful not to break them as broken biscuits weren't, would not sell at the time. And these famous red vans in the um, after the horses in the 20s, almost 100 years ago, were pretty interesting and they would drive the food to the local stores so that they could be transported. The red vans um, have been around for 100 years. The Homebush factory had little difficulty finding workers in this area um, and they had lots of families who in Homebush who probably worked for the factory the Arnott's were regarded as good employee employers and many members of the Arnott family also lived locally in Strathfield, including William Arnott himself. The original, um, the, yeah, the original um, founder of this company. And there were, um, by 1933, the number of employees grew to 2,500 
While a lot of men were fighting in the war, this is why there were so many women working in the factory doing all the jobs that the men did because they were off fighting in the war so the women... Arnas were clever businessmen. The factory that they designed made sense. They had big conveyor belts that ran from the station to the factory. This brought the ingredients from the train sta station straight to the factory to be stored, generally on the top floor so the materials could be dropped down when needed. And can you see this Sayo sign? It's heritage listed, meaning that it's recognized as being very important in history and it needs to be taken care of. It cannot be destroyed or it cannot be taken down. In 20 years time or 30 years time, you'll hopefully be able to come back to your old primary school and, 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 and say, oh, look, it's still there. The Homebush factory covered three floors. The bottom level had ingredients, preparation section and processing department where icing, chocolate coating and cream filling were made. There were lots of female workers. Girl power. The middle level had a mixing room, bakehouse and wafer and packaging department. The top floor had packaging facilities office areas and workshops. Did you know that Miss Fiona's grandmother worked here? And so did Miss Anne Marie's great aunt. In the time where women weren't encouraged to work much, they were expected to stay home and raise a family, but Arnott's employed so many staff and, and these women were really happy to help out. Arnott's biscuits are part of Australian life and these tins are a classic reminders of a time when cookies were bought in this type of packaging. The tins were returned and recycled and any tins that were damaged or broken were buried under the car park in um, Powell's Creek Corridor. For decades, passers-by would experience the delicious smells from the place of baking sweetness. From 1908 to 1997, this was where all the action was. And then the factory had to relocate to a smaller site in Huntingwood and because they, they their technology had improved and they didn't need as large a space. The former factory was um, readapted into the bakehouse quarter and this site now provides many, many references to the Arnott's history, ranging from the Sayer sign to the small Arnott's parrot emblems woven into the buildings. If you look really closely, you might find one. George Street has also still got the cobblestone road and they still have the sign William Arnott's as well. And this is what it looks like today. You can see, um, if you look really closely, um, just to the left of the IGA sign, you can see William Arnett Limited still written there. And here are some um, quotes from people who remembered how it was in the in the past. So Graham said, as a kid, mum would send me to the corner shop to get two shillings worth of plain ordinary sweet mixed biscuits. Haha, <laughs> I never would forget that. The shopkeeper would go along opening up about ten Arnett biscuit tins and put a few in each of the eat in each in the bag. A large brown paper bag full, but never sayos. You would always buy them separate. One shilling would buy the same bag of sayos. Of all the things you could do, go back for a visit, I think I should choose to go to one more play lunchtime with a bag of old-time Arnott's biscuits. And Gail Turner says, as I was a young girl, I used to visit friends in George Street, Homebush, and walked past the Arnott's factory smelling those wonderful smells. And here is a, um, an excerpt that says, Raymond Blundell, whose grandfather and father worked for Arnott's and who himself worked for the company for nearly 50 years, said, The land was bought, as far as I can recall, from a fellow named Speechley. He lived in an old humpy along the banks of Homebush Bay River that ran through the property where, in years later, the incinerator was built. In those days, the river was alive with fish and prawns. The species, even in my day as a kid, netted the river and sold their catch. Before the canal was built, the river was deep enough for the species to row boats up. In those days, 
Homebush was out in the bush and was all cow paddocks. Now, if you haven't gone um, down George, this is a little walk through from Parramatta Road down through to George Street. This is the Arnott's Bridge sign. And we're going to turn left onto George Street, passing the car wash. And as you continue to walk, I wonder if you will be able to spot the Sayo sign in the distance. Can you see it in the on up ahead on the right hand side? We're gonna get closer to it. Over there. There it is. Passing by the car wash. Some of this will seem familiar to you. You'll be able to see that coming up on the right hand side is that building that still says in red writing, William Arnett Limited. That's the heritage listed building that's still around today. See the sayo signs, you can still see it there. And as we walk closer to the Bakehouse Quarter little transportation bridge, or well, there's gate four, that's where some of the um, deliveries were picked up and where they would um, take out some of the um, ingredients, bring them down. As we're walking towards Bakehouse Quarter, you'll see on the left-hand side, that's where the current um, headquarters for Arnott's is. So if you're ever with your mum or dad, um, you can go upstairs and have a look around at some of their collectibles. And you can see the Arnett signage. And just in front of this um, headquarters is Bar Biscotti. And Bar Biscotti also has the Italian biscuit um, name. And um, across the road in the car park, some of the oven signs are still there. So you might spot them one day. And across the road from Bar Biscotti is Cookies. And it keeps going. And that is the history of William Arnett's site. I hope you enjoyed our virtual tour.